why do you think you have a tendency to apparently be misinterpreted as a miso misogynist person? Why do you think that is? Well, because there's a group of people who insist that you have to be misogynist if you think that there is any effect of biology on behavior. It was very interesting in the Scandinavian countries, especially in Sweden, because there's been a body of scientific evidence compiled over the last 15 years. And it's overwhelming. These studies are extraordinarily well done. And they're also done by people who aren't politically biased in the direction of the studies. And so what's been discovered is that as countries have become wealthier, mm -hmm. and as they've put more gender-neutral social policies in place, designed to facilitate equality of opportunity, that some of the differences between men and women and some of the differences that drive occupational choice have actually got substantially bigger, not smaller. What it indicates is that you cannot simultaneously pursue a policy of equality of opportunity and a policy that insists on equality of, of final outcome. Uh -huh. You can't have both at the same time. So that puts the Scandinavians in a very awkward position, especially the ideologues, because their presumption was that if you flattened out the social hierarchy, then men and women would become more the same because they believe everything is socially constructed. It's like, well, that's wrong. Let's uh, use a, like an example yeah. for this. Um, what do you feel about when you set quotas for uh, female and, and male in companies or There's in no public institutions, uh, governments? No. Quality of outcome policies are destined to fail for all sorts of reasons. First of all, they put the cart before the horse. They assume that if there's differences in outcome, that's evidence that there's prejudice, that, that only prejudice is driving the difference. And it's simply not true. The second problem is, um, you're gonna, do, you're gonna do that across all classes of occupations? Yeah, uh, yes, and Or are we, we gonna are. just do that on corporate boards? Uh, and also in public institutions and uh, governments, everything. So. How about bricklayers? 99% male. Right, so what are you going to do? Are you going to enforce equality at that level as well? Where are you going to stop exactly? Here's a bunch of things that have changed. Parents are older. A lot. Like 10 years. That's a lot. Children don't have as many siblings. In fact, often they don't have any siblings. Yes. You know, and then because the older parents with more money are more conservative, because they're older, they're less likely to take risks. And they, because they schedule their children's time, then the children also don't have a lot of time to play autonomously, even with other children. Wait. One of the things that I've wondered about is all this gender confusion in identity that's emerged with older teenagers, let's say. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's not a delayed consequence of the absence of pretend play in childhood. Because one of the things that children do when they're very young is dress up. They play out different roles, yeah. including different gender roles. And, they need to do that to, exp they, play isn't optional. The children need to do that in, t in order to, to mature properly. Yes, yes. And so then the question is, well, what happens if they're deprived of pretend play? We have this strange idea in the West that's very immature that marriage is fundamentally about the happiness of the couple. It's like, no, it's not. It's about the stability of the familial structure for children. That's the fundamental issue. And if you can derive some happiness, well, good for you, go, go right ahead. I would say that we should introduce whatever social policies we can fabricate and test that stabilize the that stabilize marriage. Do you have any ideas? We, we want to design a intervention, a psychological intervention for couples. Say, okay, well, you're getting married. All right, well, here's what you're going to have to negotiate. It's like, well, what's your sexual agreement? Who's, who's going to buy the groceries? Who's going to cook dinner? Who's going to set the table? Who's going to clean up the dishes? Who's going to clean out the toilet? It's like all of these things have to be negotiated. And we don't do a very good... We've blown apart the sex rules. So, so we don't like to see people do their sex-typified behaviors that were, say, characteristic 50 years ago. Okay, fine. It's all up to you. It's like, yeah, but we haven't replaced that with the sort of training in negotiation that would enable people to, to come to some sort of mediated agreement about who does what.